And I heard this really nice quote once, it's like, most people die at 18, but then they're buried at 85. So at 18, we're ready to take on the world. We're ready to make the life that we want. And then because we don't have the tools to make that happen, or the guts to make that happen, we don't go after it. So artists become accountants, songs don't get written, and people live this life that's not true to them. <laughs> We're doing a slightly different format today because we've found in the past we've tried to give you guys a lot of information and that can be really overwhelming. So we're going to deliver you like what we feel is the perfect amount of information, but we also want to change your beliefs around nutrition because it's a very challenging thing to wrap our head around and a lot of people struggle with it. So we're trying to today share with you that we struggle with it too and it's normal to struggle with it and that's what happens, but then there's ways to see food differently and to respond to food differently to make it a natural part of your life so you don't feel like you're having to like go on a diet and hate your life just to get to where you want to be. So, when we think about nutrition, it kind of gets, you know, a bit like this. And a bit more like this. And it can become a very, I don't know how many question marks I have, so I have to look at the screen. It can be a very, very confusing topic because no matter where you go, someone has a different opinion. And, and that can be very crippling because if you want to take the right action, what is the right action if 10 of your friends have told you completely contradictory things like I don't know if you guys follow Josh on Instagram but he puts butter in his coffee so how is he putting a chunk of butter in his coffee and he's shredded and some people say not to eat but some people say to eat six times a day it's a very very confusing topic so we want to try and get that confusion out of the air so you guys feel more empowered to actually make decisions for yourself and to not think you have to jump on a diet to with this information be able to create an entire life that feels healthy so how many more question marks do I have okay I want to take you guys on a bit of a story and really relate to you guys so how many people have been here? Not really, it's easy, but I love eating well and feel great. Has anyone been in a spot where they're eating well and they feel good? Yeah, we've all been there at some points. It may even be for three days. We've eaten some broccoli, woo, I feel great. Unfortunately, that's not always the reality of the matter because as human beings, if we had no work, if we had no other responsibilities, it can be very easy to do something. Like if I won the lotto, I could get jacked as shit and get shredded and, and I could probably do all these other amazing things. But unfortunately in life, it, we have stuff happening. So we have bills, you know. We have all of these things that add stress to our life and that stress takes away some of our willpower to actually make decisions we want. We have an angry boss. That's Navarre, okay? <laughs> Navarre. <laughs> you know, we, we have all of these social pressures to be a certain way and obligations. Like You might be stressed out, but your friend's like, come out tonight, and you go out tonight, but that makes you more stressed the next day. And then we have relationship pressure. So although we love our partners, considering someone else in your life is challenging too, and we sometimes put their needs first. And then this is very dramatic, so <laughs> this is super dramatic. I just Googled health issues on um, Google Images. But then we do have to worry about our own health. Like when we're constantly working hard and trying to do our best in life, we do get worn out. We do have these little health things that crop up. And they're just another stress on our plates. So when we're here and everything so, seems so easy, things aren't always going to be easy. So we have to try and make a strategy for you guys so that not only when things are perfect can you actually eat well. Because ultimately, when we get under this mountain of everything, what do we do? Anyone have any ideas? Eat too much. Chocolate! Woo! It's the reality, man. If you had a big shitty day, what better way? Yeah, chocolate's like your best friend. Who needs a best friend when you have Cadbury? Or oh, Whitaker's, I prefer. Has anyone here eaten White Whitaker's chocolate? Oh, it's the best chocolate, seriously. Don't buy it. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Do not buy White Whitaker's chocolate, but try it once. Um, but the unfortunate thing is, we eat this food to get pleasure, but it's actually another form of stress. Because when you eat foods that are unhealthy, it stresses your body out more. So unfortunately, we're looking to feel better, and it actually, in the long run, makes us feel worse, and that adds to that perpetual cycle. So, so where do we go? I don't know where my next story is. Who do we blame? Oh, yeah. This is the thing. Nutrition's not easy. So... A lot of us, our eating habits are a result of our parents. And a lot of us may have resentment or frustration that our parents never told us to eat well, but their parents weren't nutritionists, so how were they to know any better? And they weren't taught by anyone, so how were they to know any better? So for us to point the blame at our parents isn't a very good place to start. Then we have to consider the government. Like They have a food pyramid, they have all these schemes, but I don't know if anyone knows about the Heart Tick Foundation. I talked about this in another seminar, but they literally have heart ticks on Milo cereal, which is like 50% sugar. So a lot of this advice we're getting from the government, they don't have our best interests at heart. They also are a foundation that makes money. They make money from putting ticks on things. So 
we can't really trust the government either. And then some people are like, maybe they should teach it in schools, because if the teachers know it, then the teachers will do it. But they don't have time. They're not nutritionists. They're trained to educate people around maths and science and English and those kind of things. So really, there's all these potential places where we can learn, but no one has learnt it. So we don't really learn it, and we end up kind of stumbling our way through life not knowing much about nutrition. And this is why dieting doesn't work, because we've got this person. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go on a diet and lose weight. How many people have been here? How many people have been at the start of the diet? They're like, woo, let's do this, okay? And then, oh my God, they've gotten skinnier. It's working. So it really doesn't matter what diet you're doing in this scenario. You could be doing any crazy crash diet, fad diet, something off today, tonight, woman's weekly, I don't care. But if you do anything for a while, you will start to get results and you'll start to feel really good and you'll start to tell your friends. But eventually it gets boring and tiring and shitty and it doesn't feel good. How many people have been there after doing a diet as well? And then we get all this self-dialogue, these things in our head like, man, I'm so lazy, I don't have enough willpower, dieting's not for me. That's, that's not the reality. The reality is, is you're doing a crappy diet because if you're doing things right, you wouldn't think you're lazy because life is not meant to be a perpetual battle with food. If you're doing the right things, you can feel good all the time and not have to suffer. So. Then we get to the point where like, this is too hard. Because imagine if you've been trying really hard for three weeks to fire all of, your, all of your habits your entire life, to not eat all of your favorite things, to probably not go to all of your favorite social events, and to not have the physical energy because you're not eating much, what happens? You give in, okay? No! Then you end up blowing out and you get even fatter. And, and I joke about this, but this is serious. Like People will try so hard. They'll try so hard to get a result and they fail and they think it's their fault. And they think they weren't cut out to losing weight. But the reality is they used a shitty diet. And that's why we wanted to name this seminar How to Never Diet Again. Because if you keep dieting, you're going to go on these yo-yo loops and then you're eventually going to give up. Because what's the point? If you've tried to diet as hard as you could, all of your willpower and you fail, you're not going to even believe that you can make a change. So I want to propose, instead of getting to this place where we all have been and be like, I'm going to start going on a diet, I want you to get into the place where you're like, I'm going to change my lifestyle for good. So you don't have to keep yo-yo dieting because if you start changing it for good, you'll still feel good. You can still make intelligent choices and eat the things you like, but progressively over time you get healthier. And that way you're not going to go into that cycle of like beating yourself up and going up and down and oh, 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 oh. you know, you're actually going to be like, this is what works for me and I'm going to continue to do this for the rest of my life. Does that sound a lot better than dieting, guys? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. You suck. You guys all suck. Okay, so I don't know if you can see these words, but this is kind of the, the life cycle of what happens when you do a, a rapid weight loss diet. So you do get rapid weight loss, which is not necessarily fat loss, because in the process of not eating enough, you will lose a lot of muscle mass. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. And then you feel good temporarily. Why is that? Because... Although you're restricting, restricting means you're not eating as much crap. And when you're not eating as much crap, you will feel good temporarily, although you're not eating enough. And that's why you start to feel shitty soon. So then you start to feel terrible. So you have low energy because you're not eating enough food. If, you, if I'm not eating, I'll be like, oh, hey guys, how are you? I have no willpower. That's just how you feel when you don't eat enough. So that's why we, we need to eat. We need to eat the right amounts. Uh, our workout performance or our daily performance drops. So when you're not eating enough, you literally become less energetic as a person which means you burn less energy all the time. Like I'm bouncing off the walls right now, but if I hadn't eaten for a few days, I wouldn't actually be burning much energy. So your metabolism actually gets less. The more energetic you are, the more you're burning, the more you can eat as well. So you need to make sure that you're keeping your energy levels high. Um, and then you get cravings as well. So basically your body's just like, man, give me some food, this sucks. And you feel terrible. And then what happens? You run out of willpower. It's finite. How long can someone torture themselves until their mind gives up? you eventually you're like, man, this sucks. Like, why am I doing this to myself? Because we're not meant to always be doing everything with willpower. We're meant to be enjoying life. That's what we want to do as people. So you run out of willpower, you bounce back, and then you start to overeat or even eat what you were eating before. But because you've lost muscle mass and your metabolism is a little bit slower now, you actually bounce back further. And that's why dieting can be a very toxic thing to do. Oh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's me with dieting, guys. Thank you. You're up, Jush. I'd also like to thank you all for coming here today because about five days ago we sold like five tickets and then we got a crowd so round of applause for the crowd yay all right I'm not very good at cooking last time I cooked I burnt the chicken put your hand up if you have 
said this before. Put your hand up if that happened. Yes, I'm not very good at cooking. <laughs> Who here still believes they're not very good at cooking? I don't, I reckon I'm pretty good. Come on guys, <laughs> let's, let's actually be honest. Hands up. Who? Yeah, we've got some more hands up, all right, cool. What, happened at, what about this? Last time I cooked, I burnt the chicken. When incidents like this happen, and when you have these, this frame of mind around cooking, does it not make you nervous stepping into the kitchen because you're like, oh, actually, I don't think I'm very good? Or there's that fear of burning the chicken again, and you know, I've burnt the chicken multiple times, but you just keep going and going and going, right? So I want to talk about these two phrases because this is in the coaching lifestyle and us owning the gym. This is, a, this is thing, terms we hear over and over and over again. And why is that? Why do we keep hearing these phrases over and over again? So we thought about it. And I decided to think of a question. So put your hand up if you don't like being wrong. <laughs> All right, we've got some hands up now. All right. Now keep your hand up. So put your hand up if you don't like being wrong. Keep your hand up if you'd like to be right more. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> not going there. But keep your hand up again if you would like to predict the future. Yeah. Oh, a few hands going, to, oh, I don't know if I want to predict the future now. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to talk, talk about that right now, okay? How do we be right more? How do we be wrong less? And how can we predict the future? Or more realistically, how can we influence the future? What you focus on will determine your outcome. Your outcome is determined by your focus. What you focus on will determine your outcome. So think about it for a second. Because if you have a negative focus, you're probably going to get a negative outcome, right? In application, let me give you an example. Oh, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to cook. So you're going to step in feeling flustered, feeling overwhelmed, and your entire mentality around this cold cooking process is a frustration, overwhelm, stress, anxiety. And usually, that is the they're the ingredients that's a burnt chicken, right? But what's even more fascinating is the statement that we come up to justify our actions. I knew I was right. I knew it. I was right. Because, well, think about this for a second. If you say, I'm no good at cooking, and your meal turns out like shit, you're actually right. And subconsciously, you knew that when you were there. Because you're setting yourself up to have a safety net to say, actually, I was right. I confirmed that. And this is the funny thing. If our meal was delicious, we'd be wrong. So an entire mentality a single perspective can completely shape the way. Doesn't matter what degrees you put the oven on, doesn't matter what fucking sauce you use, what spice mix you use. If you go in with the mentality to say, I don't know how to cook, or last time I burnt the chicken, you are immediately creating that foundation for that dish to turn out like shit. Where is it? Ah! I think that's Photoshop, by the way. The fire in the oven, I've never seen a flaming, flaming oven before. But you get the picture, right? Yeah. Put your hand up if that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. It's a simple mentality change. Who here learnt to ride a bike? Yeah. Yeah, who here likes riding bikes? Yay. Not really. Not really. Oh, most of us anyway, right? <laughs> but when we first wanted to ride a bike, when we, fall, when we fell over, what did we do? Most of us. We get up, we have a bit of a cry, a bit of a sook, and mum and dad to say, yeah, well, good. Training was back on, maybe. But you just get up and you go and go again. And every single person here knows how to ride a bike because of this episode in our childhood. But then, in the modern day, when we become adults, when we try and improve ourselves in this regard, then <coughs> we end up like this, and we, we decide that when we fall off the bike, we don't get back on again. And it's purely just in here. It's purely just in here. And I know a lot of you do know how to cook, but then when we start talking about nutrition, they're like, oh, I don't want to go back on my training wheels. Or when we talk about meal prep, which is just cooking in bulk, it's still cooking. You're just cooking in a larger quantity. People are like, oh, I don't know what to do. 
And then we jump into that mentality because we don't want to put the L plates on. We don't want to put the training wheels on. But there's, we know, we know that because we can do something else, we know that we can learn the skill. But what we're going to do today is show you how to eliminate some of these hurdles so that you get more excited. Just like that kid wants to be excited about riding on two wheels. The determination is there. The outcome is desirable. So today we're going to show you how desirable the outcome can be of living a happy life, living a healthy life with less stress and less stress on your finances if you can be more intelligent in the way you cook your food. Have more, be more abundant in time by learning how to meal prep, plan it, and then execute for the week and you'll have all this time because you don't have to cook anymore because it's already sorted. Having a little time to be organized at the beginning, having the right mentality will completely shift your outcome because that's what you want. We don't want to go to the gym because we want to go to the gym. We want to go to the gym because we want to be fitter, healthier, stronger. We want longevity. That's the outcome that we actually want. So just think about that for the rest of the hour and for every day of your life. What is the actual outcome that I want? I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. And what do I need to do? So the only thing holding you back from improving anything is yourself. And just to make it even easier for the whole meal prep stuff, has anyone ever heard of Google before? Who's heard of the frame Google it? We've even got a, a, a lady who, uh, by the way, like, I fucking hate her, but her name's Siri. She doesn't help very much, but sometimes she does, does a good job. Samsung uses a thing called Bixby, but you just ask the internet things and they just give you these results. The, the two purple top ones, that's actually my search history. <laughs> How to cook, I accidentally pressed enter. But Frankfurt's, I actually bought some Frankfurt's the other week and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Frankfurt's today. And then I was like, I don't fucking know how to cook these things. Turns out you just put them in boiling water, but I just Google it. <laughs> I, Googled, I literally Googled, I was like, and, I, and, I, and they were great. Actually, I felt like shit afterwards because it turns out they're not healthy at all. But <laughs> I just thought, I was like, what are the macros in? I didn't even look at them, I just did them. But there you go. How to cook rice, how to cook chicken, how to cook spaghetti, cabbage, asparagus, quinoa, salmon, chicken curry. Anything you want to do is available to the internet. You just got to trust yourself and be willing to do it and said, how can I make this easy? I'm going to Google it. I bet if we went on Google and said, how to cook easily, we get even more tutorials. It's a simple thing in here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mentality, guys. It's a massive thing. It's a really massive thing. Okay. So I want to show you. I was never like like extremely unfit or anything like that, but I did have a lot of bad lifestyle um, habits. So this was me back in the day. Uh, <laughs> little skinny nerd. Um, I was always like a mama's boy. So mum did everything for me. So when I moved up uh, to Perth to eat, I had a staple diet of you know Amiga ring noodles and eggs and you know, all the things, McDonald's, cakes. I actually got addicted to eating paddle pops so I'd eat a box of paddle pops a day at various points in my life. But that was just normal. And when I was at home and mum was cooking for me, I could get away with it. But when I had free reign to do whatever I wanted to do, I started to, I, st I never got like overweight, but I started to pack on a little bit. And I went from skinny to like my cheeks started filling out, started to get a little tummy and everything. And, and that's where I began. So the whole point of my story is to tell, to tell you guys that tracking your food is actually quite easy. And I've gone from this guy to a relatively fit person and I want to take you through that transformation. So who here has tried to track calories? Yeah. And who here doesn't like tracking calories or does, doesn't like the idea of it? That, that was, I didn't even know what a calorie was at this point in time. But just to let you know who I was, uh, my mom was like the ultimate mom. She would just clean up everything after me. I didn't have to do a single dish in my life, made me into a useless human being, but she loved me so much. And then I had two older sisters as well. So I was always the little baby jolly boy, you're the best jolly, but I was actually the most useless because my mum was so good. I was like, like, say I leave a toy for like a minute, turn around and be like, where's my toy? And mum had already put it away. I was like, what the hell? So like from, from being raised that way, I didn't, I was never a very organized person. I never had to remember anyone's birthdays or anything like that because my whole family did it for me. And then throughout school, I was naturally quite smart. So I didn't have to study much because I just got away with it. But eventually as I became an adult and my, my room was filthy and my house was filthy and everything was filthy, I realized, oh God, I haven't been raised that well in, in that regard. So that's where I began. <clears throat> and then, this is a hilarious phase of my life. Um, when I found fitness, I actually loved gymming. So I started gymming to get girls because I was a little skinny, lonely nerd and I thought that's what you had to do to get girls. But 
I fell in love with training. And when you fall in love with training, you go on all these internet forums and you learn all this stuff and guys are like, eat chicken and rice and broccoli. And you're like, okay, I'll eat chicken and rice and broccoli. Like, just eat as much as you can to get massive. And in this phase of my life, I was doing all of those kind of things. So I did get relatively fit. I also wanted to always show off my muscles. So I'd go to parties in, in costumes that allowed me to be muscly. So that's me as Wolverine. Uh, I never got lean though, like, I was always like fairly strong because I love training, but I never got into really good shape. So although I was bouncing from diet to diet and doing everything, nothing actually got me to where I wanted to be. So I was still guessing, although I was being healthy and though I was being fit, I was still guessing, here's me at another party. That girl's just like, who is this guy? But see, I never, <laughs> I never got into insanely good shape, but because the way I was and I'd been raised and nurtured. I'm like, I'm not an organized person, so why would I ever have the rigid structure of trying to you know, meal prep and count calories and doing those kind of things? Because even back then when I was into fitness, that was hardly a main thing that people did. It's just a very recent idea that we're sharing with you guys today. So I went through that phase of program hopping and program hopping and because I trained well, I could get away with it. But after a period of time, I'm like, well, let's just have an experiment to see what it would be like to actually track calories. So I, I did it for several months. I apologize, this is the only decent picture I have. It is, a, it is a, like a half naked selfie of me on Snapchat, but it's, one of the, <laughs> but it's only one of the decent pictures I have in my rig, so it's the one I use all the time in presentations. What's that? The one. Yes, the morning abs one. No, that, yeah, pre-bed abs. So that was like, although I was like hopping around and you know, I was never in crazy good shape, after a couple months of tracking calories, I got insanely lean very easily and it wasn't challenging and that's because it works. And, and I was of the belief like, it's gonna be so hard and so constrictive and that was where I was at. But once I actually started to put stuff into my app and I was like, wow, that actually, at first it takes maybe 20 minutes a day to guarantee that you'll look great, but eventually it would take like five minutes a day because we, we play on every single app all the time. We get good at every other app. Why can't we get good at a, a tracking food app? So eventually I got to that headspace before some of my slides disappeared. So I'm going to see if my other slides are here. Oh yeah, cool, they are here. So yeah, before I was in the headspace of like organization sucks and those kind of things suck and why would I even try and make my life so constrictive? I like being free. But when I got in, into this phase of my life, I was literally eating two ice cream uh, sandwiches every night and I was eating a lot of stuff, but I was just making sure, and look, I, I'm healthier now and I don't do that, but it still worked, you know? You can, you can eat what you want in the right quantities and still build the body that you like. And I was amazed that I could feel like I had more freedom and I was getting more results and it wasn't that constrictive and it didn't take too much time. So that was kind of my transformation. This was meant to, you're not meant to just pretend the bottom line doesn't exist. So when I was at the start of that journey, I was that little boy eating cake, like playing video games and not doing much with my life. I felt tracking was too hard and I felt it was inconvenient and we all have felt that way, you know, but from actually battle testing that idea, from taking that idea and integrating that idea into my life, I actually figured out that tracking guarantees results and it wasn't that hard. Like if you're trying to save money, you're not just gonna be like, I think I'm saving money, spend money, spend money, spend money. No, you're gonna be like, I really wanna to go to Europe. I'm gonna save every day and I'm gonna track that so I can get what I want. But when it comes to food, because we get this pleasure attachment to food, we tend to think about it a little bit differently, but it's the same set of thinking. So it's a tool, it's not something that has to constrict you. The way you use it is up to you, but I want you guys to realize that tracking is actually really empowering and if you do that in any area of your life, you start to get a bit more certainty of, and awareness of where you are in your life. So that's my little story, guys. I think it's time for Navar Pool to share his, his experience. All right, so obviously today what we're doing is trying to get the basics of nutrition. Put your hand up if you track your calories. Okay. Put your hand up if you're happy with how your nutrition's going. Put your hand up if you want to improve in your nutrition. So most people who didn't put their hand up for tracking their calories are also the same people that put their hand, didn't put their hand up for tracking their calories. I've been doing this for a long time now, way too long, I've been a coach for 11 years. I actually did my like, nutrition certification through Precision Nutrition about five years ago. And every single time I do nutrition plans, the one thing that gets results is literally tracking calories through an app like MyFitnessPal, super easy. Um, you're noticing this now as well. And it's the number one thing. Joel will cover that a little bit as well. What I'm gonna do though is I'm actually gonna talk about this problem, busy social life and I don't have time to meal prep. Put your hand up if you believe you don't have time to actually meal prep and do your food. All right, good, well, one person. So that means, 
which is awesome. If anyone ever actually says they can't meal prep, no one put their hand up so all of you guys could do it. So firstly, that breaks that limiting belief, which is awesome. So if any of you guys come to me like, oh, I don't have time to do it, you guys just bullshitted me and lied to me, so it's your fault. <laughs> you guys are liars. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how easy it is to actually do your food without actually having to meal prep. We've all done this before. Joel's done this before. We've done this before. Super easy. I actually don't meal prep. I actually use, um, which I'll dive into now, I actually use Perth uh, Fit Food. So they actually do my food for me. So if you guys are limiting on time and you don't have time to meal prep, which you guys have plenty of time, now you put your hand up, so that's awesome. But if you are struggling with finding time to meal prep, there are other ways, and that's what I'm going to dive into now. One of the ways is, is purely just paying a company, paying someone to do food for you. Right? The meals are $8 to $11 each. $11 for the higher, more calorie-dense foods. You might be spending a dollar or two dollars each per meal more than if you're to meal prep it yourself. It's not a whole lot of extra money, but it saves on time. I personally like it because I'd rather spend time on business or other things than meal prepping. And so that's why I do that. Another option is, if we're looking at all this, I literally order fit food. And then outside of that, I'll have my shake in the morning. So I make a shake. It's probably the only thing I prep and maybe a couple of snacks here and there, like tailor-made treats. Outside of that, all I'll have is fruit, nuts along the side as well. I get some snacks like munches or what have you, which is a healthy snack. So there's literally no excuses for not being able to have food that you want. Another thing I also hear all the time is people saying that they're on the road all the time or they're busy at work. Right? There's literally, does everyone have a microwave at their work? Most people, right? So what you can do is an easy alternative as well is you grab microwave rice. All you have to take is a bowl with you. Chances are your work has a bowl there as well. So take some microwave rice, chuck in a bowl, microwave the rice, chuck some tuna in. If you don't like tuna, get some chicken. There's pre-made chicken, there's roast chicken. You can literally take the chicken off the roast chicken, put it in the bowl, grab some sauce, there's a meal for you. It's obviously not the most tastiest in the world, which is why meal prepping or ordering a meal prep service would be a better alternative. But this is an excuse I hear all the time. All the time. Don't have time. I'm at work. I'm busy. But then all I hear is complain about the fact that their food isn't well. They're not happy about their results. They're not happy about their body. They're not happy about their performance. And so what are they valuing over that? And so what I'm showing you today is literally there is no excuse. If you guys believe you don't have time, you don't have the way or the alternative to be able to do it because you can't meal prep, but you all said you have time anyway, so then you literally grab some fruit, grab some nuts, some carbs, some healthy fats, meal prep service if you need to, or grab some tuna, grab some chicken, grab some microwave rice. There's even meal preps at most uh, servos now. You've got U-Foods. There's also at most shopping centers. There's literally no reason at all for you not to be able to prep your food. Everyone knows how to use a blender, right? Put your hand up if you know how to use a blender. Yeah. yeah, perfect. That's another alternative. You can blend your own meals. Put some protein powder in there, put some fruit, put some healthy fats. That's a whole entire meal there as well. So if any of you guys have this belief that you're not able to find the time to meal prep or to make your food or what have you, there is literally, firstly, your guys said you have time. So pretty much this point is not even worthy right now because you guys actually told me and you told yourselves, you told everyone in this room that you actually have the time to meal prep. So it's not even any point in me talking about this, right? Because you all have time. But if that ever comes up, you don't have time, easy. Everyone knows how to walk in a shopping center. Everyone does their food shopping, right? Everyone knows how to food shop? Yep. Perfect. Go food shopping. Buy some rice, buy some tuna, buy some chicken, buy some nuts, buy some fruit. I'll teach you guys later how to figure out your calories and macros in this chat. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that as well. Figure out how to track so you know how much food you need to eat, so how many calories. Your perfect breakdown in macronutrients as well, and I'll teach you guys that. And we'll also give you homework so you can do it at home. I'm even going to give you an actual tutorial that I've done on my fitness pal. So if any of you guys are like, oh, I don't know how to use the app. Firstly, whenever we start something new, we don't know what to do with it, right? We get better over time. So you guys are going to get better at it. You might not be perfect at it at the moment, but you will get better. I'll give you a tutorial. So I teach you how to do your calories, teach you how to do your macronutrients, teach you how to use my fitness pal. You know how to meal prep. Well, Josh will teach you how to meal prep. 
You all have time to meal prep, so no excuses there. And if you don't have the time at one point in your life, you could do this. So put your hand up if you think you have an excuse now for not being able to figure out what to eat and what food to make, and if you have time to not do it. Done. That's me out. <laughs> All right, so this is just a, just a little precursor to Nav. Nav's going to take you guys through how to actually design your own how to never diet again plan so you don't go through the yo-yo period. But I just want to keep empathizing with you guys and understanding that this is a very clouded space in terms of information. So when we're thinking about diets, man, on the radio, multi-level marketing people, we're always trying to be sold different things. So how, how many people have heard of the lemon detox diet? Yeah, you squeeze lemons in your eyes and you cry because it's a, a terrible diet. Uh, the blood typing diet, this guy actually got taken to, to court um, because apparently people died by trying to use his diet to heal cancer. Um, fasting, you know, there's all of these different options. And in a moment, I'm going to be like, what is the consistent trait between all of these diets that actually makes them work? And why do some people swear by one and other people swear by the other and they're both healthy and happy, but which one do I choose? That can become a very, 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 very confusing thing. Uh, then we have clean eating, you know, chicken, broccoli, rice, salads, those kind of things. People will swear by clean eating, but then the next person is going to swear that you have to eat the paleo diet, otherwise you're going to die a horrible death. <coughs> Oops. Okay, I actually had more images here. For some reason, it hasn't saved. We have vegans. Everyone knows about vegans, and if you don't, then you obviously don't actually know a vegan because they would tell you about being vegans. I have no, <laughs> I have no problems with them. I'm just making some jokes here, guys. But the point is, we, we all get very attached to an idea. And the point isn't to get attached to one idea because we're all so different. The point is to get attached to the idea of creating a, a nutrition like strategy that works for you. So I kind of looked at all these diets and I'm like, what is the consistent thing that actually produces a result? And these words aren't very big, but the number one thing is adherence. And when, what, what two words did I use? Yeah, enjoyment and convenience. Enjoyment because food is a big source of pleasure for us and we can't deny that so you want to enjoy what you're eating if you get to a plate and you just have a dry potato every day you're not going to adhere to that are you unless someone really likes potatoes I'm sorry if I've offended you potato vegans this is like a special subcategory of veganism potato vegans screw you no. <laughs> um, so enjoyment convenience and then you have to have your caloric amount to meet your needs so a calorie is just a unit of energy Navar is going to cover this later but if you're enjoying the diet and sticking to the diet, and then the diet has the right amount of energy for your body, then you're going to get a result. I edited these this morning, and it obviously didn't save, but the third category I had here is that you feel good on it. Because we've all come from different genetic lineages, different backgrounds, so one person may feel better eating more fats or may have some allergies to certain foods, whereas other people won't. So when you find the diet that you really hug onto and tell everyone to do that diet, that diet has satisfied those three boxes. You like it, you're eating the right amount of energy for the result that you want. So if you're trying to gain, gain weight, your diet might make you get to eat a lot. You know, If you're trying to lose weight, your diet is going to naturally make you eat less. That's why fasting works. It's not some magical process. You're just not eating for a long period of time than eating, so you're eating less. There are some health benefits, but energy-wise, that's how it works. Okay. Same with veganism. If you can't eat like half of the dairy, you can't eat cheese, you'll lose weight, basically. Um, cheese joke. If you can only eat potatoes, you get very bored, no. And ultimately, it, making sure you choose a diet that makes you feel good. Can I tell you what's gonna make you guys feel good when you eat it? No, you eat it, and then an hour later, half an hour later, the next day, are you having heartburn, are you farting, or are you feeling really energetic? So every diet is gonna include different foods, but you'll know when you're eating the right foods for you, because if you listen to your body, don't listen to your cravings, listen to your body, you're like, oh, I actually feel good. But that's why everyone's gonna jump onto a different bandwagon because that one for them ticked those boxes. That one for them was easy for them to enjoy. Um, they, they had the right amount of energy that was sustainable for them and the foods agree with them. That's about it. So don't think about what diet is right for me. Think about creating a diet that satisfies those needs because if you can do that, you're not gonna feel like you're on a diet. You're gonna feel good, you're gonna have energy, you're gonna get your result. So that's me just fluffing up Nav, but Nav's going to take you guys through now how to actually design your diet plan. This is a little bit more informative, so try to keep up, try to keep an open mind. Um, think of any questions for the end as well. So if you get lost, don't feel silly. Think of some questions and we'll fill you in later. Round of applause! Yeah! Now we broke it down some limiting beliefs, kind of discuss about what most people deal with, their struggles and what have you. 
Now we know that you all have time. Now you know you can do it. There's no other limiting beliefs now. There's no crutches. There's nothing that's holding you back. Now I can teach you guys how to do it. And now there's no excuses as well, because I always say, but yet yeah, no one put their hand up for the excuses. So now I'm going to give you the knowledge on how to do it, and now you have to do it. So everyone knows what calories are, right? Everyone's obviously heard of calories. Yep. Yep, yeah, awesome. Calories is literally just a measurement of energy. So dive into that a sec. So it's literally just all we, that's how we measure energy. And that's how we measure how much energy goes into our body and how, we, how much energy goes out. Now, dependent on the goal and the result that we want, depends upon the sort of energy we want to put into our body and the energy we exert as well. That's purely it. There are other factors which we'll dive into in the next two seminars. We're going to dive into a seminar on female nutrition and male nutrition, which would be specific to the hormonal balance and what have you. But what we find is most people dive into more the supplements and the top end of the pyramid, not the base. The base is purely the energy. How much energy you put in and how much energy you put out. That is it. Most people are looking at, oh, I'm going to have celery, I'm going to have this sort of vegetable, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, right? That's what most people talk about. People talk about the specific foods, the specific supplements. But the base of all of it is energy. Regardless of what you're eating, if you're not sorting out the base of the pyramid, you're not sorting out your calories and the energy intake and how much energy you're putting out, you are not going to get the results that you desire. Simple as that. Guarantee you that. How many of you guys think you eat pretty fairly decent? Put your hand up. Fairly decent food. Is that me, Renee? Oh. <laughs> I know. I guarantee you that we all know what is basically good or bad, right? We all know what foods provide more nutrition, what foods provide less nutrition. I'm not saying that any of you guys eat poorly, but what we don't do is we don't track. We don't track how much energy we put in and how much energy we put out, which is why we're not getting the results that we want. And unfortunately, it's because this belief that it takes time, it's so difficult, it's so hard to track calories. It literally, once you get the hang of it, it takes one minute per meal, if that. If you have five meals a day, that's five minutes a day for you to get the results that you want. And I want you guys to think about how else do you get energy? How do you provide your body with energy? Food, right? There's other aspects that like you can sleep, vitamin D, what have you. But the main source of energy is food. We are literally what we eat as well. The food that we put into our body our cells, our muscles, our organs, our fat, everything within our body breaks down that, our gut, and we become that food literally. So we are literally what we eat. So if you're going to drink a can of Coke, or if you're going to look at a Snickers bar or have a block of chocolate, literally look at how that chocolate is then going to form your cells, your muscles, your fat cells, your fat, your organs, everything within your body. We are literally what we eat. And so that's on a hormonal level, and we'll look into that later. But what I want to do is get the baseline. I don't want you guys to do anything else other than get your baseline and track your calories. As a coach, if I have a client that wants nutrition advice, if they're not doing their calories and they're not tracking how much energy they put into their body, I can literally do nothing to help you. Nothing. Neither can any other coach. Because we have no idea how much energy is going in your body and how much energy is going out. It is impossible. The very first thing you need to do is your energy, regardless of how well you eat or what you eat. Make sense, everyone? Put your hand up if you understand now. Yep. Put your hand up if you don't understand. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> okay, so, like I was saying, depending on how many calories you put into your body, it depends on the result. Let's say if you, by the way, what we should be having, like our basal metabolic rate, our sedentary metabolic rate of just living, breathing, and what have you, should be 1,500 calories a day. That's what it should be. Sorry? That's an average. Correct. That is an average, yeah. So if you're American runner, what's the average? Yeah, so that's your sedentary. Yeah, so it's completely different. So if you're a marathon runner, if you're expended, uh, expending more energy, then naturally it depends on the person and their activity level, which I'll actually show you guys. So depending on your activity level, I'm actually going to teach you that. Depends on how many calories you have. But if you're doing nothing, if you are a standard human being, if you're a homo sapien, you're just living your life, sitting on the couch, you sit on the couch 24-7, you do nothing, sleep eight hours a day, what have you, our basal metabolic rate, our base metabolic rate should be 1,500 calories. And when you look at that, 
And then you think about how much energy expenditure you put out throughout your day as well by exercising and what have you. Let's say you add on another 400 calories. That's 1,900 calories a day to maintain your body weight. That's what a healthy human being should be at. Most people, especially women, will be eating about 1,500 calories a day while also exercising, doing 10 to 20,000 steps a day and putting their body through stress. And then they wonder why they're not getting the results that they want. Because you're overstressing your body as well, and we dive into that as well. But it's a big problem. I would say probably 90% of my clients that I have through for nutrition under eat. Under eat, not over eat. Uh, Mez trained Shay now. Does he eat? How much does he weigh? 50 odd. Is he down now? So he weighs 130, big boy. Big boy. Doesn't eat at all. Under eating. And there's other factors to that which we'll dive into later down the road. But what we need to do is improve on our, base, on our metabolic rate. Our metabolism adapts. It isn't just fixed. Our metabolism is literally the chemical reaction of everything within our body. The metabolism is literally everything. Metabolism is just one fixed thing. It's a correlation to all our hormones, testosterone, estrogen, thyroid, gut health, everything. So our metabolism actually changes and adapts. So we can change it. What I'm gonna to do today anyway is I'm gonna show you. So if you wanna gain weight, you wanna eat more energy, standard, because then your body stores more energy, right? If you're exerting 1,500 calories, you're eating 1,800, that's 300 extra calories a day that your body's gonna store. And that's how you gain weight. Same thing in reverse. But like I said, there are hormonal factors to it, but we want to get your base sorted first. So if you want to lose weight, eat less. If you want to maintain weight, eat the same. Does that make sense to everyone? If we look at it first, it's energy first, and then we'll, deep, we'll dive into hormones later. But most of the time I find my clients, we figure out the energy first, hormones change. A lot of the time our hormonal function is damaged because we're not providing our body with enough energy, with enough fuel. Right? Are you going to drive your car with no fuel in it? You couldn't, actually. If your car has no fuel, you literally couldn't drive it. Literally, like you're, you're fucked, man. Like, and your bodies are like that. Literally. If you're having hormonal issues and you're looking at your calories, you're eating 1,200 calories a day, how do you expect your body, your hormonal function, everything within your body to even function? Imagine brain function as well. You're not providing your body with energy. So get this sorted first. If you're not tracking calories, no one can help you. Track your calories, get energy right, and then we can help you further with other factors like hormones and what have you. But I get so many people coming to me and asking me for advice, and I'm like, do you track your calories? They go, no. I go, track your calories then. They don't do it. They come to me for other advice on what supplements will I have to take. I can't give you any advice. I can't help you. No one can, until you get your energy sorted. So, calories. Knowledge is power. It's the biggest thing I learned. I try to make it easy for my clients back in the day, I'm trying to find ways to like Porsche control it and just teach them how to Porsche control and what have you. The reality is you need to know what you're doing. You just need to understand it. You need to have awareness of the importance of energy in, energy out, how many calories to have, how many calories that you're expending as well. It's important to know that knowledge because then you're going to succeed further. You're going to gain more confidence as well because you understand it. I think confidence comes a lot from understanding. If we don't understand something, we lack confidence a lot of times. Like, oh man, what am I doing? You know, how many times we go to the gym, we're, not, we're lacking confidence because we don't know what we're doing within the gym. Happens all the time. So try and, I'm going to get this all to you guys anyway as homework, so you guys could actually read over this because I know it's a lot of information. So this is literally just like, um, sorry, what was your name? Uh, Doug. Sorry? Doug. Doug? That's me, Doug. So like the marathon question, this is what I'm talking about, so this covers that. Depending on your activity level, so if you're a normal healthy individual with sedentary lifestyle, so you're doing little physical activity, you had 26 calories times your body weight in kilograms. Make sense? This is a very baseline estimate. This is very rough. This is averages over each human being. But, like I said, as a coach, you need to follow this. And I actually give in a homework as well. You need to follow this, set up one. Let's say you're a healthy individual with sedentary lifestyle. I would say most of you start on 26 calories. The reason why is because most people actually under eat. And so if you're eating 1,200 calories and you do this calculation times 26, you're at 1,800 calories that's actually a 50% increase. So that's gonna be a little bit of a shock to you at first. So I'd say most of you start from the lower section. If you find that you eat a decent amount of food and you probably eat quite well and enough food in relation to your body, then I would say look at the actual uh, activity levels. 31 calories, 38, 41, 50. 
Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. <laughs> Yes? Why wouldn't it be better to do it seven times a week? No, it's just dependent on that. So if you're looking at vigorous activity, highly activity jobs, or let's say heavy training 50 to 20 hours a week. Yeah, what I'm saying is that you've got a total figure of calories per week. Correct. So no. On a daily basis. Three times a week, seven times. So in other words, you divide it into smaller components so that perhaps every meal you get a, a, a calorific uh, component. This is more just off of the activity level of your week. So if you're training seven days a week, yep. then I will go for 38 calories because it's outside of the three to five times a week. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. This is the total per day, and then obviously that impacts the whole entire week. Okay, quick question another way. Yeah. If, if you, um, you can still have Sorry, so many calories a day, but in one meal, Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Can you comment on the difference of care for a person if I can help? Yeah, so there, there actually isn't any difference. If you could eat all your food in one meal, yep. there aren't any. The slight different in benefits, then we're diving into like meal timing, yep. which um, I'll dive into quickly, but that's, I don't want to really dive too much into that today. <coughs> yeah, okay. We'll do the Q&A afterwards and we'll cover that. Because that's a great question, but we'll dive into meal timing later and how many meals to have in a day and how to separate the calories. But um, I'll talk to that later. So does everyone understand this in regards to like, if you look at it, you look at your activity level and then you pick how, my, how many calories per your kilogram in body weight? Then that's maintenance. Is that maintenance? Yes, you would say so, but dependent. So this is, this is just an estimate. So depending on, you follow this for four weeks, and I'll, I'll give you that for, as well, for you guys as well, you follow it for four weeks. Depending on your results for those four weeks, depends on whether it's maintenance, whether you're losing weight or gaining weight. I don't know. You're different to Eva, Eva's different to you. Everyone's different. You might have the same activity levels, but your hormones might be different. You might be eating differently. She might eat more than you or vice versa. So the idea of this is to give you a baseline of how much energy that your body is actually expending on a, on a daily basis. And then depending on following this for four weeks, let's say if you have 2,000 calories a day for four weeks, let's say Tess loses weight, Eva gains weight. You'll have to drop the calories, you'll have to increase the calories or keep it the same if you wanna keep dropping weight. Does that make sense? So this is like a baseline, this is just an estimate. Depending on the results over those four weeks, depends on what you change to see where the result. Yeah, I'll give that all to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All this, guys, I'm going to dive more into it. So all these questions are going to be answered. I'm giving you the homework, how to figure out your calories and macronutrients, and I'm also giving you a tutorial on my fitness belt on how to do it. Any questions in regards to that? Cool. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into macronutrients. So food is made up of macronutrients and micronutrients, right? Macronutrients is only three of them, protein, fats, and carbs. What you need is a balance of all three. The reason why is because each macronutrient has a different benefit to the body. If you're eliminating one or the other, you're missing out on a whole aspect of the benefit of it. By the way, guys, I'm also going to give you the slide and an email if you guys want to, you guys can take photos, but you're actually going to get this physical copy. So if we're looking at protein, the benefits of protein, growth, tissue repair, immune function, essential hormones and enzymes, energy when carbohydrates aren't available at the time, and also preserving lean muscle and mass. Which is why protein is so massive, especially in bodybuilding and athletes and what have you, because it does create protein synthesis, which helps in the repair of muscle and the retention of muscle as well. So that's why protein is important. If we're looking at fats, fats are extremely important for natural growth and development. It's really important for your hormones, especially for women. If you're not getting a natural balance between your mono, poly, unsaturated fats, and your saturated fats as well, don't be scared of saturated fats, then you're gonna have hormonal issues as well. It's one of the biggest things. Most people miss out on fats. The reason why people look at fats and think it makes you fat is because there's nine calories per gram of fat. So if I go back over that, if you look at protein, the macronutrient protein, the macronutrient carb, it's only four calories per gram of that macronutrient. If you're looking at fats, it's nine calories. Over double, and this is why they had that misconception that if you're having fats, you're gonna gain weight, and it's because it's more calories per fat. Does that make sense? But don't be scared of fats. I'll teach you guys how to figure out how many fats to have within a day, but fats are extremely important, especially for women. And that's literally dives into the macronutrients. Carbs as well are your energy source. The reason why people are going to ketosis, if anyone understands, is because it removes that as an energy source. It removes glucose and use ketones. 
Uh, I would not recommend it at all unless you're going to see a coach and see someone about it, but it wouldn't work for most people unless you're actually having someone help you through that, for many reasons, hormonally especially. But carbs are extremely important. It helps with performance, helps with energy for the brain and for the body as well. If we're looking here, it's needed for the central nervous system, the kidneys, brain, muscles, including the heart, to function properly. If we're not providing the body with enough carbs, we're not going to perform within the gym, which is also not going to help us in gaining muscle, retaining muscle, and helping us perform within the gym as well. Do not be scared of carbs, but I'll teach you guys how to do that. So everyone understand the macronutrients now? Yeah. Woo woo! Yeah. Cool. So what I'm going to do, this is real basic. I'm going to rush over this, guys. And I'm actually, like I said, I'm going to give this to you. Right? So you don't, if you guys not getting it straight away, this is going to be delivered to you. We're also going to deliver you the whole entire seminar. So you can actually read the slides while listening to me and go back over it to you get your head around it. So if we look at the macronutrients, how to figure out your macronutrients, simple for your protein. Protein is purely two times your goal body weight. I would say goal body weight because a lot of people might be like, let's say Shay. Shay weighs 130 kilos. If his goal is 100 kilos, 90 kilos, you probably get down that lane. You probably could make that. If he's eating two times his body weight in protein, he's having 260 grams of protein. If he does two times his goal body weight, which is 90 kilograms, it's 180. That's a big difference in calories, if that makes sense to people. And so what I would do is do your goal body weight, your realistic goal body weight as well. If you weigh 100 kilos and you want to get down to 40, that's not realistic. So get your goal, your realistic ideal body weight, and go, I'm going to times that by two. That's how many grams of protein you're going to have. Your fats is 30% of your calories, simple. Your total calories times 0.3. And your carbs are leftover calories. I'm going to give you the slide, and I actually have homework at the end of everything for you guys to fill out. All you have to do is fill it out. Cool. Now, macronutrient sources. And you see there's an overlay, which is why this is so important. If you're looking at fats, fats are like your avocados, your oils, your nuts, and your seeds. But you can tell that there's also an overlap of certain macronutrients, like fats and proteins. So if you look at stuff like eggs, if you look at oily fish, if you're looking at bacon, and you're looking at some dairy, then you're going to see an overlay between protein and fats. Look at your main protein source in the middle there, chicken, fish, lean meats, egg whites. And I'm going to skip the next three because they're not really necessary unless someone has tofu. But you can get protein for tofu and what have you. But then you have an overlap of protein and carbs. So if you're looking at beans, lentils, legumes, quinoa and what have you. Which is why like a lot of vegetarians and vegans actually, if they're not tracking their calories and they're not tracking how much food they're having, they overindulge in carbs. That's why a lot of vegans and vegetarians end up gaining a lot of fat. And it's because they don't know how to actually get a good source of protein while also balancing out their carbs. Because most of the vegan and vegetarian sources of protein are actually an overlay of protein and carbs. It's possible to do, but a lot of people move into that sort of scene and vegetarians or vegans without that knowledge. And that's where they really struggle. And if you look at the carbs, everyone knows what carbs are. Your, your starchy sort of vegetables, your potatoes and what have you. Another thing as well, guys, I don't know if everyone is aware, this is something that I know a lot of people aren't aware of. Fruit is a carb. Fruit is actually a pretty big carb. If you look at a banana, a banana is nearly the same amount of carbs as a whole cup of cooked rice. So be mindful of that. The amount of times I have clients be like, oh, I'm eating really well. I had five pieces of fruit today. Oh, fuck. That's nearly a thousand calories of fruit. Right? So like, depending on the size of the fruit. And so be mindful of that as well. If you're having a lot of fruit and you're not tracking that as well, that's going to add up to your calories and your carbs and your sugar and your glucose as well. So be mindful of that. Now, this is something that a lot of people also struggle with when people are out socializing, people at the restaurant and what have you. People have a family event and people go, well, I've got a family event. I don't know what I'm eating. This covers that. Like I said, I'm going to give you this slide as well. So I want you guys to study this. Everyone has a hand, right? It would be so awkward if someone didn't. I feel so bad. Someone's like, hey. <laughs> bad joke, terrible joke. So you can use your hand as portion sizing. You get really good at this over time. If you're looking at your hand, look at the palm of your hand and use that for meat sauce. If you're having one palm of meat, that's 25 grams of protein, the macronutrient protein. And so if you're my fitness pal, if you go out, normally you'll weigh out your chicken, you have 100 grams of chicken, you put that into my fitness pal, and you go, okay, cool, that's 25 grams of protein. If you go out to a social event, you go, oh man, I don't know what I'm putting on my plate, 
But then you look at your hand and you're like, oh, wow, okay, well, that's about one and a half palms of meat. That's about 37.5 grams of protein. And once you get good at that and eyeballing your food, there's no excuse. There's no place that you could go without you being able to look at your hand and look at your food and be able to put that in my fitness pal. That's the biggest excuse I hear as well all the time. I have social events, I have family, we go out to dinner all the time. Right? We have family events all the time. I don't know what to do. Use your hand, look at your protein, and it's literally one palm of meat, 25 grams of protein. One cupped hand of carbs, 25 grams of carbs. One thumb of fat, 10 grams of fat. 25, 25, 10. Well, 20 if you want them together. <laughs> everyone makes sense? Yeah. Everyone makes sense? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Do you all make sense? I don't, know. I don't make sense. That's not a word about avocado. Sorry? That's not a word about avocado. Yeah. This is why fats are like, yeah, fats are high in calories. And this is the... <laughs> but also in saying that, avocado is a mix between carb and protein as well, so be mindful of that. It's not a pure fat source. Something like nuts and seeds are higher in fat. So if you look at avocado, it's actually not as high in fats. It's probably like five grams of fat, half of it, because it's also a carby sort of fruit. Is, it, is that a fruit? Is it a seed? Yeah? Oh, man. Yeah. Woo! That's the best knowledge bomb I've dropped. Does everyone understand this now? Yeah. Yep. Tess loves to talk, eh? Okay, so if you're going out to a social event, you literally, I will give you the, it's a 20 minute tutorial on how to use MyFitnessPal. And you literally, once you know how to use MyFitnessPal, you can literally just look at your, your hand and you can look at the sort of food you put in it and you can put it to MyFitnessPal. Wherever you are, anytime, any place, you can literally track your food. There's no excuses there. And now Josh is actually going to teach you guys how to prep your food so then you can make your delicious foods while using your calories, macronutrients, and MyFitnessPal. Cool, sound good? Okay, that's just a mental note for me because otherwise I'll get off track. So when we're talking about nutrition and, and, and building your, um, your diet, your diet, building your lifestyle, right, and just thinking about the intake that you want to have, the first rule, the first saying that I have is close enough is good enough, okay? Remember that, write it down. It'll be in the video, but it's not in the slides. Close enough is good enough. And what that means is, is because every single one of us is vastly unique. We come in all short sorts of shapes and sizes and densities, right? But so is every single apple that falls off the tree. So is every banana that comes out of the ground. Okay, you all got that, it was my joke, because bananas come out of trees as well. So when you look at it, you go to the supermarket, there is, there's literally no way of telling the exact macronutrients, the calories, the, the measurement, the amount, the density that exists in this particular fruit compared to what happens on my fitness pal okay but we know that if we pick up a banana and we search up banana on my fitness pal it's most likely going to be a banana okay and it's, it's going to be close enough right that's my first rule of thumb is close enough is good enough does that make sense yeah. because different cows are stronger and muscle fiber density and all this kind of stuff close enough is good enough i'll drill that in close enough is good, good enough okay good job josh okay yeah. yes and then, oh, there's another analogy that came to mind. Okay, so the other thing is think of your metabolism like it's a fire. Okay, so fire needs fuel to burn. Okay, and we're talking about burning calories and stuff. So imagine we have this little fire inside of us. Okay, and we wanted to keep it nice and warm. Okay, and burning, burning calories and burning fuel and burning fat. So what we want to think about is you want to make sure that you consistently fuel that fire. Okay, and this is why we talk about skipping breakfast. And obviously we've heard of protocols like fasting and all this kind of stuff. So just ignore that for a moment and just conceptualize this so you can understand the importance of eating. Okay, because if you put too much wood on this fire, we got a little fire here and then Josh comes on and goes, hey guys, I've got all this wood that I've cut. And then we, we dump it on there. You're going to end up putting that fire out. Okay, because there's too much fuel. At the same time, I'm like, hey guys, I've got this twig. Let's light a fire. And then you throw it on there and then and then it's gone as well. So you want to find a way to realistically constantly fuel this fire, okay? That's my second analogy. I know we did have a discussion, Doug, about you were talking about eating all of your food in a, in a single meal. Technically, yes, you can do that. But as a general rule of thumb to make it simple for you guys, because the, the, the outcome of this seminar for us is to 
simplify things for you, make it more simple to understand. So we're teaching you fundamentals and basics here. So making sure that um, we're just trying to keep it simple, easy to understand. That's my next one, okay? And the last thing is when we're talking about actually building a, a meal plan and building your food and, and your, you're working out your macros and stuff like this and how much food you want to eat and how much food you want to cook, think of it like you, you put your big stuff first and then your little stuff last, okay? So if we're, we're gonna do, so let's do some gardening. All right, we're gonna go do the front, the front porch or something. And we're gonna do like a pebble, a pebble stone thing that we walk, <laughs> right? <laughs> we're gonna walk. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna put your pebbles in, you always put, you put your big ones in first, right? Put the big guys in. Yeah, I heard that nice, Joel. Good analogy. Joel and I have a thing about speaking in analogies and diagrams because it simplifies things, right? So you put your big things in first. And then you put your slightly smaller ones in and then you put the smaller ones in again. And then afterwards, then you just fill the whole lot with sand and then brush it through, okay? So when we're looking about designing our fuel intake, we're just gonna focus on the big stuff first, okay? The big stuff always goes first because it just gets the majority out of the way, okay? That's my analogies. Round of applause for Josh's analogies. Yeah. yeah. All right, so meal prep question, yes. Hello, Tess. Hello, what's the big stuff? The big stuff? Calories. Wait for my next slide. Because <laughs> I studied them, right? So that I could be on time. So, it's, it's not the next slide, but it's coming soon. So first of all, first of all, if we are confused about anything, let's ask Mr. Google, all right? Or Mrs. Google, all right? You can even ask Jeeves if you want. <laughs> Anyone remember Ask Jeeves? Yeah. I did, Jeeves didn't give me much, but anyway, that's why, that's why Google worked. Just Google it. Honestly, just Google it. It's a very, very simple thing to do, even though I'm going to give it to you in the seminar as well. Any question you have, you can ask us. Always happy to help, but Google's always there, and Google's probably a little bit faster at this day and age. Not only that, YouTube, also owned by Google, okay, has videos in it, okay? Sometimes slideshows with voiceovers. But if we look here, Gordon Ramsay, that was Maddie, Gordon, Gordon Ramsay, or G-Dog, 20 million views on how to master five basic cooking skills. There's 20 million people that have just worked out how to improve their cooking skills like that, okay? Below that, there's a, there's a YouTube channel, channel called How to Cook That. Three and a half million subscribers. Three and a half million people in the world have committed to improving their cooking skills by Googling it. They're no different to us. How to cook perfect rice every time, 3.6 million views. How to cook perfect eggs every time, 14 million views. A lot of good cooks out there, eh? Does anyone understand the point? It's pretty fucking easy if we just... We don't even have to go... We can just go... Tap, 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 tap. Because this thing, right? $1,200? $1, hey, Siri. This is a, not an iPhone. Anyway. Pretty simple, right? So just so you know, <coughs> everything's available on the interwebs, okay? The intergoogles. So my two-step, talk about simple. Jesus, Josh, settle down. My two-step system, okay? Oh, I thought, I thought there was going to be a catchphrase there. My two, I didn't study my slides well enough. My two-step system on how to master your meal prep, okay? Mastery comes from simplifying things because life's already complicated enough, right? Oh, oh shit, two-step system. Number one, learn how to cook the ingredient. Okay, and I'll show you what our three ingredients are. Protein, fats, carbohydrates. See that, it's a big circle, equals big circle. All right, these are your three big pillars of designing your intake, okay? The ingredient. Someone want to yell out their favorite protein source? Chicken, chicken, chicken eggs, bacon. Oh, I love bacon. bacon. Who here loves bacon? Yes. Bacon's my favorite. Learn how to cook the ingredient, okay? This is the only ever time we have. Who has heard of the phrase quality over quantity? Okay. In nutrition, in this world, reverse that. Because we're going to focus on quantity, okay? Because like, we could have like the best burning wood in the world sourced from the Amazonian rainforest, maybe not the rain, but the, the dry forest because it burns better. Amazonian dry forest, like f people like 
hands were bleeding to carry this over to us and it cost us $1,000 per half kilo. But if you got this much, you're not gonna fucking burn much, are you? Okay, we got the highest quality wood, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna fuel that fire because the, qu the quantity just isn't there, okay? Because when it comes to nutrition, we're also very intelligent, are we? Aren't we? Yeah. yeah? So common sense will stop us from eating shitty food most of the time, right? So if you focus on, uh, don't shake the head test, I saw that through my peripherals, right? If we focus on the quantity and making sure that our overall amounts are right, nature has it that common sense is gonna help us shape the quality of that food regardless, okay? We have to be in a really bad mood to overdose on Whitaker's delicious white chocolate or dark chocolate. But you get the point, right? We're gonna focus on quantity first, okay? So learn how to cook the ingredient. Number two, buy, or Google it, the flavor and add it to the ingredient, okay? So you're gonna focus on the ingredient, learn how to cook it, and buy or Google the flavor, okay? So buying the flavor means going to the shops and buying the flavor, I'll explain that in a second. If you don't wanna spend the money on it, then you can Google how to make a sauce, make a marinade, make a spice rub, okay? So let's simplify this even more, Josh's audience. Cooking chicken, I actually got this off Google. Images, okay? How to cook a chicken breast, okay? Pan seared, oven baked, poached. There are three ways for you to cook a chicken breast. You now officially know how to cook chicken. Pretty much, right? We now officially know how to cook chicken. Now we get to flavor it. If you walk into any Coles, IGA, Woolworths, there's pretty much, Master Foods basically own an aisle at this stage. But now, who here likes teriyaki chicken? Who would like some smoky barbecue chicken? All right. What about some soy, honey, and garlic chicken? Whoa, honey barbecue? Oh, stop it, Josh. All right. If we go back, if we know how to cook the chicken, right, that's going to get the fundamental amount in, okay? The fundamental amount of food that we have to have. So using NAV system that is in the homework as well, and you're going to get sand and what he just explained. Using that system, you're going to be able to work out the amount. So as an example, I, know, I need 200 grams of protein for this, for this meal, okay? So I need 200 grams of protein. I'm going to go on my fitness power. You can even Google it, calories in chicken, and it will tell you instantly, okay? So if I need 200 grams of protein for this, for this meal, it's going to tell me that I needed about, off the top of my head, I think it's like 220 grams, which is a big old fat chicken breast. Like one of the, like, you know, the steroided ones up from, from Woolworths. One of those like big old, like it's like a turkey pretty much, or a peacock or something, right? So you're going to know that. But now you have the ingredient, you know how you cook it, you've got your chicken breast. When you add the flavor, part of my language, there's five eighths of fuck all calories in this, okay, in all of these. If you wanted to go even lighter, actually it's my next slide, if you're even more accurate with your calories, you just get a spice rub, okay? Moroccan chicken is actually one of my favorite meal prep meals because all you gotta do, right, is you get the chicken, cut it up. Right, that's me with Moroccan chicken. Like that. Then this is me mixing it. Right, and then this is me in the oven. Put it in the oven. Okay. Ching! Oh, that was 20 minutes done. Hey, Moroccan chicken, everybody! Yeah, that's it. That's literally what we're gonna do. And even if you want some extra flavour, <laughs> extra tasty Moroccan chicken. That's literally all you need to do. Oh, accidentally. So, same thing. Cajun it. Lemon pepper. So you can just literally go, and you've got three flavours. I've just given you one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I've given you eight different recipes like that. Eight different recipes. Right? Because once you know how to cook the ingredient, you can just add any flavor you ever want. And if you don't want to spend the money on these or these, then you go Google and you go chicken spice rub, chicken marinade, chicken sauce. Right? You just Google chicken something and it will tell you. Because there is minimal amount of calories in... Like seasoning just has literally nothing in it. It doesn't even count, okay? So you don't even have to log it in microwave. You're like, how many calories is two tablespoons of paprika, one, one tablespoon of garlic powder? You don't have to do that. Because the law of close enough is good enough eliminates the actual need to measure these things. 
maybe check the sugar content sometimes in these. But if your entire intake for the week is pretty on point, it's going to be pretty healthy, then your sugar in this is going to be pretty much eliminated. It's not going to be that, it's going to, not going to have an impact because if you're being considerate of your health, you're going to be minimizing sugar anyway. Does that make sense? And then this is what you do. You would combine your ingredients to make a meal, okay? So if you learned how to cook chicken, how to cook, cook steak, you've now, you've, that's, that's done. That's a skill that you now know. You can add any flavor you want to any of those and you've got like, a, you, there's a hundred different flavors you can Google. There's a hundred different like steak and chicken recipes you've got. And you can do the exact same thing for tofu or egg if you're a vegan or whatever this stuff is. Egg for a vegan. Egg, egg for a vegan, yeah. Uh, like a potato vegan, right? Or an egg vegan. So does that make sense? Pretty easy. You can literally do the exact same thing. Go past the recipes. Rice recipes. I literally looked up an article on the, uh, before and it's seven easy rice recipes. You now have seven easy rice recipes. So if, you, if, you, if you combine seven different rice recipes with a hundred different chicken recipes, you now have like over two, three hundred something thousand combinations just by pairing those two. Does that start to make sense? But you know how to cook chicken every time. You know how to cook steak every time. You know how to cook rice. Rice, you just go to Coles, Wellworth, Big W, buy a $20 rice cooker, done. Okay? Rice in, water in, and just leave it. Go back on your phone, okay? Rice in the cooker, chicken in the oven, go back on Facebook, Instagram, whatever you want to do. Same thing for pasta, and then vegetables. Exactly the same. Veggies are easy. And just so you know, veg, majority of vegetables, you think about your green veggies, they pretty much have like not a massive carb carbohydrate contribution. So my rule of thumb for veggies is try and get them in every single meal and eat as much of them as you can. General rule of thumb. Okay, just eat as much veggies as you can. Because most people here don't eat enough vegetables. And if you are eating too much vegetables, I'd rather you get to that stage before you even think about that being a problem. Because no one ever does. So focus on both of these two columns. And your essential cooking tools. 20 bucks, right? Rice cooker, like I'm Asian, right? My mum's more Asian than me and I haven't seen her actually cook rice since like, I, I don't actually, I can't remember. She's been, we, rice with every meal, you name it. We, I had rice with cereal when I was growing up, you know. <laughs> mum just used to cook rice in a rice cooker or a thing, or in the microwave. She had this little thing that you just put in the microwave and done. And it just comes out perfect every single time. Even a true Asian like mum. Asian grandma, she, I don't know, I think she actually cooks it right because she's she old school, you know. But the point being, you, in this day and age, it's, it's that simple. We can just, it's just, we just offload it to the rice cooker. My favorite thing in the kitchen is, a, is an electric wok. It's just one humongous saucepan that you can put anywhere else. Anywhere on the bench, you can put it, you can put it on top of the dog if you want because it's just, it just it's, it's plugged in. As long as it's plugged in, it's all sorted, okay? But then you literally have, you can just chuck anything in there and it's just a gigant. When you think about meal prep, okay, you're cooking large quantities, all right? Cooking large quantities. If you, I want 200 grams in this meal, is I'm going to have this meal every single day for the next five days. 200 times five is, Maddie? 200 grams times five? A thousand. It's a kilo. Kilo chicken, okay? I'm going to go buy a kilo chicken. Make it 1,100, 1,200 because Woolworths probably pumped a heap of water in it as well, okay? Or do what Maddie does when we cook the other night, pat the chicken down as well and get the water out of it before you put it in the oven, otherwise your chicken turns like shit, right? Chug it straight in the white, you can cook it, all right? Or in the oven. Just work out whatever your favorite way of cooking an ingredient is. That's all you need to do is master the skill of cooking the major ingredient. And your last one is go to Ikea and get them humongous, um, they're like this big, these bowls, humongous bowls. And they're honestly the best thing ever. Like, they make good hats sometimes as well. But you just, when you're cooking meal prep, you just have a massive amount of food. You can get all your rice chucking in there, mix it with some veggies and stuff. Just a big old mixing bowl. How good is like mixing stuff in the kitchen and not spilling anything? Oh, that's great. It's great. I don't do it often. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't even get me started on slow cookers. This is how you, this is how you slow cook, right? You get your chicken, right? And then your sauce and then lid on and then it's done. I'm fasting today, that's what. <laughs> I had a green tea, I was like, oh, green tea. That's actually it. Essential cooking tools, just make sure you have the fundamental things to cook the fundamental ingredients, okay? Think about it like that.
Oh, and I'm going to finish off. We're talking about these are our big steps, okay? The big things that you put in there. So if you want to base, let's say, let's say you need out of the blue 2,500 calories a day. That's what we've worked out. 2,500 calories. What I suggest you do is build up to about 22, 2,300. In your, in your big pebbles, okay, your big stuff, which is mainly your protein and your carbs and, and fats as well. If you can get things like coconut oil, or avocados in your salads or whatever, wh whatever you decide to do, get your big things in first. And then with that final, final buffer zone, just fill it with what I call measurables, okay? Measurables is something like sand. You don't eat sand, right? But sand, you can just pour a little bit in, pour a little bit less out, okay? But a chicken breast to a chicken breast is like, whoa, this is a big thing, right? but things like you can add in an extra couple tablespoons of rice, okay? Because rice is what I call a measurable. Chia seeds, anything that just comes out in like lots of it, and sp you can just spoon it out, that's what I consider a measurable or a liquid, okay? So then make up your last, and this is, this is not in the slide by the way, so just remember this, make up your last couple hundred calories based on measurable items, things that are easy to pour, easy to scoop, because they're the easiest ways to fine tune it. Because so, those, those, they're literally little pebbles, right? Rice, uh, chia seeds, nuts, okay? Or, hey? Butter's fine, yeah, because it's a tablespoon. Anything you can do, use with a spoon or a fine tuned thing is literally like putting these little, little pebbles in. Does that make sense? So build as close to your number as you can, and then bake. that's your fundamental intake for the day. And the last thing that I do personally, I don't actually use my fitness power. <gasps> Josh, how dare you at the end of the seminar talk about that? I do use my fitness power, but I don't use it daily. I use my fitness power monthly. So what I actually do, and this is how Maddie and I used to do it together as well, is I actually just plan my entire meal prep for the week. So Saturday's my meal prep day. I'm going to go after this, go shops, go get all my food. I just plan out what's my intake that I need for the week or every single day, and then I cook that, and I just don't move off the plan. Hey Josh, do you want some of this? No thank you. I planned it already. And sometimes if it's like coconut bread or something on my final, I'll have some. But, but it, for, for, me, it, for me, personally, it's about just getting massive and getting jacked, so I look pretty on camera for all you guys, right? So when you're trying to gain weight, it's the, it, you're a lot more flexible, right? But if you're trying to lose weight or get a little bit more leaner, you need to be a bit more strict, a little bit more disciplined, and to help and aid with being disciplined, being more stricter around what, requir what your own requirements are, is if you really invest into the process, that now belongs to you, right? If you invest into the process and put a lot of time and energy and effort into it, or I shouldn't say that, just put a lot of heart into it, put a lot of heart into the process, that now belongs to you, right? Because you fucking built that on your own. But then when someone says, do you want to come do this or let's go get pissed on the weekend or whatever, then you say no, because don't break my heart. My icky, breaky heart, don't break my heart. Right? <laughs> That belongs to you. When you've got something that belongs to you, you're 10 times more resilient around it, you're 10 times more disciplined around it because it's fucking yours and you worked for it. Yes? If you, like you just mentioned, like if you're going to have a drink, where would you subtract that from? Like, would it always be carbohydrates? Or if you're gonna put that into your to keep it simple, think about your overall calories. So are you talking about like an alcoholic drink? Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you, if you must and you go, I don't drink, I sometimes I do, but... If you must get on the pierce and drink, you, it's a very intelligent idea to work out how much you would somehow plan of drinking, right? But then if you say, like, I'm probably going to consume like 600 calories worth of alcohol, God forbid, then you will look at your plan or, for, or just work out what's, a, what's, a, what's an entire meal that you could subtract. And, and sometimes that's what we do as well. So when we're like being really strict around that food, now if you want to come up for Q&A, we're now in Q&A. Um, if you're going to subtract from, from your food, you just work out like what's a big chunk, an equal chunk that can eliminate. So if we're going to go out for dinner, sometimes we just skip a meal. So I'll skip a whole lunch because I'll have like a 500 <laughs> calorie lunch. Or my, 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 my coffee is more, I got, uh, mine's like two Big Macs, my coffee is. Because I, I, that's how much I need to fuel myself. Butter, coconut cream, protein powder, other oil and stuff. It's, it's called Josh's special coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I would Ricky say carbs gone. though, yeah. mainly because if you're looking at the macronutrient breakdown and alcohol is mainly carb source, then if you yeah. want to keep a balance of macronutrients, then yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Sorry? That's just what you drink. 
you can't drink anything that has protein or fats within it, unless you're having something like Bailey's, which is a little bit of milk, but then that's just a little bit of protein and fat. Mm. So if you're looking at the actual health in regards to like the macronutrients, the benefits are gonna balance with all three macronutrients, because you're not gonna be drinking like a meat, drinking a meat. If you're not drinking a meat, <laughs> alcoholic drink that provides the protein and fat, most alcoholic drinks are purely in regards to like carbohydrates. So yeah, I would say, like Joe said, try and calculate how many calories of alcohol you have or are planning on having. By the way, it's gonna scare the shit out of you. I'll just hold it. Oh, okay, it's I'm gonna. Just do recording, so oh, really? Just do this now. Yeah, it's, it's actually gonna like you'll, you'll be quite shocked. So we do it like yeah, yeah, just yeah. Google Eric Cowan's like calories Oh, it's a crazy amount. It's like 160, 200, depending on the drink. I'm just spinning everywhere. Yeah, alcohol is, alcohol is ridiculous, by the way. Yes, yeah, it's your best option. Yeah, I would say so because lower calories. Yeah. Uh, and you're getting hydrated from soda water. Hey! Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you, yeah, plan it out and try and find an alternative that is going to get you buzz with as little calories as you want because you all want to get a little bit buzz now and then. But yeah, as you do it more and more, which is why it's important to do MyFitnessPal, if you're at the point of like us, we've been able to do it for a long time. We're also at quite a healthy metabolic base that, like Josh said, he doesn't have to track MyFitnessPal every day. But if you track it every single day and you'll find out how many calories and macronutrients are within certain foods and it'll actually... It'll bring you awareness and education, knowledge is power, and you'll realize the amount of things that you might actually stack on a daily basis add up and rack up, especially alcohol. Alcohol is a massive one. Bringing awareness to alcohol is very important because you realize actually how- And it's a poison. Not only has calories, it's a poison. So. It literally is. Because it's a poison, the body takes, the body prioritizes it to digest. <laughs> yeah. The morning bog after drinking, and I don't want to bring it up, but it's because legitimately it's a poison, so the body's like, let's digest this first. <laughs> Yeah, literally. And then you have all this food that you have sitting within your stomach as well that is taking a, a back burner on being digested because it's trying to digest the poison first. So not only, and I'm not saying don't drink, but like you could definitely do it, but not only at increasing calories through alcohol, but your body's also trying to digest that over digesting nutrition, which is more beneficial to the body. And having that awareness is very important. And it doesn't mean you can't do it. Balance is important. But you guys need to have the understanding and awareness so then you can create these values and dictate what values you prefer. Do you prefer looking good and feeling good six days out of the week or would you rather get buzzed on the weekend and screw that over for the rest of the week? It's completely dependent on you. We're not telling you which way to live your life, but having the awareness and the understanding around that is power and it's going to help you in achieving what you want to achieve. And in turn, hopefully achieve happiness because that's all we're trying to chase, right? Yeah, that little yeah. boy. Yeah, happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Will. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. Yes, sir.
your stick up of mindfulness. Mindfulness is literally just pausing and just really just reflecting on where you're at and making sure that you're in the present moment and you're not even fucking thinking about anything else. And if you're stressed out or if you're just not even thinking about your chewing or your or uni or, or I've got a fucking Uber coming and, and whatever time I'm gonna do, oh, I've got to put makeup on, you know, Josh is cooking me. You don't know this, you know? But if you see a stick in your list, oh, what's that sticker? Okay, cool. And then you go back in, back into things, you're probably not gonna be as aggressive, you know what I mean? But just just play the sticky game with yourself. If you haven't done it, it's good fun. I played it for like a day and then I just put stickers everywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm quite obviously and I'm like, stickers everywhere. But anyway. But yeah, it's a good little game, but just play the singing game with yourself. Yeah, another thing on top of that, before I get to Andy's question. Um, there was a guy, an entrepreneur uh, somewhere in America, but he used to go for this ride, told the story about how he used to go for this ride, it's like a 15 minute bike ride, and he used to just pump out and go hard because he thought it was going to like improve on his heart rate, increase his heart rate, and he was going to get through that ride quicker. One day he went through it more mindfully, and he found he went through it quicker, so he actually did that 15 minute ride in 45 minutes, and his heart rate was higher. So we have this misconception that we think that we need to like oh, be really aggressive with everything we do so we can provide with energy and focus, but in fact, if we actually take a sit back, a lot of time we get it done more effectively and a lot quicker. Yeah. A lot of time we're so impatient, we're rushing through things so quickly, we're actually missing things, we're saying things wrong, doing things wrong, and that adds up time. How many times do we do something and rush it so quickly that we actually have to spend double time going back over it and fixing it and redoing it? Yeah. I've been massive into that because I'm a very impatient, angry boss. So I'm trying to get a bit more mindful, but uh, that's a big ethic. 100%. Yeah. That's a great word. Well said. Um, I was just going to say, on the test question, yes, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I found things like recipe remedy or fire painting mm-hmm. being like mm-hmm. natural things that can kind of, because <coughs> I'm stressed and kind of spiralling, I can't switch my headspace. Mm-hmm. So I find that, okay, I know that this is natural, I'll take that. And then immediately my head goes, oh, like, I've got that and then I can slowly change my headspace. So yeah. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I've also just recently discovered that recipe remedies have um, the little jellies. Yeah. Because I used to do the gross, like, um, yeah. liquid stuff, but yeah. that's more of a Yeah, the tools now. Yeah. And it's easier to take just read these well, not like, I'm having a panic attack. And there are two benefits of that as well. So the power of the placebo, is it called? Yeah. Sorry. Two benefits to it is it does naturally create, like, 5-HEPs. It's a precursor. Of serotonin, which is like the love, feel good sort of hormone, the Joel hormone over here, neurotransmitter. So it is a precursor serotonin. So in fact, it does have a response. But on top of that, the placebo is so powerful. Like you said, the mindful yeah. act of actually going towards it, like, oh, I'm going to take this pill to make me feel good. You instantly go, oh, I'm taking a pill to make me feel good. Placebo effect, you are going to feel good. Yeah. And so if you are taking something like 5 HTP, which isn't expensive anyway, and it, it does provide you with happiness and feel good hormones and what have you, go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. I think using the power of placebo is very important, very powerful, because it's just the mind. Yeah. Like Joel said, if you think of food, your body responds. You get hungry, your saliva glands, everything changes <coughs> in your body. Our, we literally are our thoughts. We think about a sexy woman, what happens, Joel? Uh, there we go. <laughs> so things happen, and we've all experienced this. We've experienced, we thought about something, and our body then follows that. And so doing something that creates some sort of placebo effect or and it does create a positive effect is helpful. Stuff like oils as well, like if you have like yeah, that. Nice that, that, that yeah, it's yeah. nice little oils that you can actually just sit back and smell. Playing the senses, playing the senses as well. Music, bring video games, present. anything just to break the flow. Yeah. Literally, yeah. using our senses to pull us into the moment is very important. Yeah, very nice to say. So this is the mindset seminar, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I guess I'll just add in as well. This is what I showed, showed to Nav. Um, with one of my, my life coach, coaching clients. But basically, I wrote, I called it the, oh, this is cool. I called it the happiness cheat sheet. Or, for some of you guys, you can reframe that as a love mode. But the same thing in, Anyone seen the goal setting seminars that, that we, we've done? I use, I do it on Trello because I manage all my clients on Trello. But it's just a program that I just do stuff. You make a word document, you put it, you post a note if you wanted to. But just on a piece of paper, write your happiness cheat sheet. And then whenever you freak out, when you get stressed out, whatever, you pull, you pull, you know, oh shit, I'm stressed, I'm anxious, and you pull the cheat sheet out because when your brain gets so flustered, all you're focusing on is the overwhelm and the stress and the, what do I do? But when the brain's in a state of, what do I do? It doesn't know, what do I do? You know, so the brain's stuck. It's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> but 
when you get stuck in that state, the brain is in is in a shit position, right? And it's hard, it's diagnosing a problem, but it's not in a position that can fix it. But if you pull a sheet of paper out or pull an app out of your phone that has the information there, you just focus on that one single point and then you go through the list. So what did I do on this cheat sheet? Off the top of my head, I can't fully remember what I did it because I just do it with each client. But basically you ask yourself, have I covered all my fundamentals? So have I taken time to breathe? Have I taken, have I, have I, have I, have I had a nap? Have I slept? Have I eaten? So, Identify what are your fundamental needs? Am I just relaxed or am I driving right now? Am I freaking out? So what, are, what am I focusing on? So I ask myself where am I focus? Have I cleared my mind? So have I written down all my problems on a piece of paper? Okay, and then there's all these fundamental things. And then underneath that, I wrote an entire list of everything that makes me happy. And in his case, it was just like uh, my grapes. Grapes was one of them, okay, <laughs> grapes. Okay, but then he put things like yeah, shopping, or going for a walk, or listening to podcasts, meditating, having sex. Um, with he loves it. So having sex and then and hanging out with mates and then the list of like his top five best friends of who he could communicate to. But then he's got an entire list of a checklist. Okay, I'm stressed. What do I do? Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. And then that's his rescue remedy. That's his pill. So when he freaks out, he just goes through his questions. Have I done these? Because at least it gives him. He knows that this is working towards getting him out of the state of overwhelm. And then once he's in a clearer headspace, the problem may be solved, if it's not, then you can go through these happiness cheat sheets and be like blah, 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 and, and that's basically it. So just write yourself a happiness cheat sheet or a happiness survival guide, and um, that will help you lose weight from the nutrition seminar. Yeah. Any more before we wrap it up? It's getting, getting on now. Yes, any other big important ones that just will tie together everything we've learned, or you guys? I'll just recap that after the seminar, the number one thing is calories and macronutrients. If you don't go home from this, do the homework and actually start tracking your calories. If you don't do the formulation that I gave you, if you don't figure out your back calories, if you don't figure out your macronutrients, and you don't start tracking, then you've done the seminar wrong. <laughs> if you feel lost, you can have a one-on-one -on -one session with us regarding nutrition about these more personal needs. If you do have some questions about what foods are right for me or any individual stuff, talk to us. Like That's what we're here for as well. So don't hesitate if this is not specific enough for you guys too, so that's always an option. And also be mindful, the next seminar is a male specific one, so we're gonna dive into male hormones, female hormones. Okay, hey? females are welcome to that seminar as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. if you have yeah. a male in your life that you wanna yes, help juice. If you wanna help with the video. If your man's not showing up in the bedroom, you wanna find a little bit of information, come down. Yeah, yeah. Honey, <laughs> honey, I've talked to you this today. <laughs> <laughs> There's a syringe on the plate. <laughs> So the next one's a male one specific to male hormones, whatever male goals are, so the male specific goals for performance, yep. muscle gain, weight loss as well, uh, testosterone, stuff like that, libido, yeah. energy, focus, feeling alpha, feeling yeah. alpha, feel like yes. a man, so we help with that, and then the female one is dealing with all that female hormone stuff that I don't really I'm uh, diving into like the cycle, diving into estrogen, progesterone, like the cycle aspect well, of stuff. Why it sucks being a girl, I want to be <laughs> yeah. uh, Cortisol for women as well, and then... Uh, play around with that as well. So we do have those two seminars. The end of next month is male one. That end of the following month after that is the female one. So we'll put those dates out that you guys know. And hopefully, if you've learned from today, you would have figured this out. You would have been tracking. And then come to the male and female one. Find out more about your hormones, your gut health, what have you. Fix that, and then you'll have everything you need. But you need to do this first, guys. Because like I said, we can't really do anything with you guys. We can't help you. You can't help yourself. If you don't know how much energy you're expending, then put Okay. That's it. Round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Much love. Celebrity cards <coughs> coming through. Woo. Nutrition. <laughs> yeah. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. Yeah.